Okay, welcome to installing your polar power meter. Uh, this short video is intended to show you how to install your polar power meter for the Polar S series. Uh, my watch is a 625 and I guess it will work also on the 725 watch. For those of you who don't know, training by power is a way to train on, the, on a bike which measures the input or the force that you press on the pedals rather than the output of your heart and there are coaches that will tell you various uh, reasons why one is better than the other but this is a practical video and so here we go when you first receive your power meter box there will be a lot of wires and cables and magnets and things and you'll be a little bit over order at first first thing to do is to mount the, um, the handlebar mount I mounted mine on the right hand side of my handlebars because these little uh, this little plug is very delicate, and I guess on the other side it would be it would be um, at risk of getting nudged when you change your handlebar, change your position on your handlebars. So at least putting it on this side, you've got protection where your hands don't generally go in front of the um, in front of the handlebars that are to there. You get a few of these little zip ties in your box, but if you go to somewhere like Poundland you can get hundreds and hundreds for a pound and I would probably suggest that's the uh, the way to go the watch then sits on there so you can see it and this is facing forwards on the bike and these two little nudges these two little notches mount on these two little sensors on the back of the watch and if you go running running in your watch it, these do get a little bit uh, clogged up so it's worth sort of cleaning those out every every few weeks or so I would suggest that if you do if you do get a miss read on your power meter or if it goes off for any reason, ninety five percent of the reason for that or ninety five percent of the time is because of a poor connection in this area. The next thing to do is to mount the power meter itself and it goes on the right hand chain stay. And you can see from mine that it's had a few modifications along the way. The polar manual suggests how far it should be from the chain, and, and uh, mine wasn't far. Mine was too far, and I was outputting the amount of power out that would um, have left the Tour de France in my wake, which obviously wasn't right. So I've raised it up with uh, some of these little plastic rubber type of strips and a bit of old hose pipe, and just put a bit of tape to um, hold it still. These little wires at the front go off to the down tube. These little wires at the front go off to the uh, the down tube, and be careful with the uh, the chain wheel as that rotates. You really need to get close and personal with these wires, and make sure they're out of the way of the chain wheel. The polar manual suggests that you don't tighten anything up until you are absolutely ready, and uh, and I would strongly suggest that you do uh, take heed of that warning. This wire at the back goes off to the back derailleur. It just, just, just looks at the chain as the chain is rotating, and that's quite a smooth surface under there. This is a bit fiddly, and I, I tried it with um, the derailleur that I got on, and it, it didn't work. So I just went onto eBay and uh, got the derailleur that the manual suggested, and it cost about ten pounds and worked almost straight away. Um, be careful undoing your back derailleur. It's not intended to be, come apart like uh, like the manual says, but if you get the one they suggest, it, 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 it works no problem. The next thing is the speed sensor, and this is just a conventional bike uh, speedo. This uh, little plastic tab points upwards, and this uh, magnet just rotates around as the, as the back wheel rotates, and that just measures the, uh, the, the speed of the back wheel. One final thing to point out is a cadence magnet, and this is a conventional magnet which mounts on the right hand crank and it goes past a little notch on the front of the um, power meter and this measures the cadence presumably by telling the power meter which, uh, which pedal is where. So every time this pedal goes past that notch, that's the up pedal, and every time the other pedal goes past, this pedal is the down pedal. So to summarise, it is tricky putting your polar power meter together and a bit of caution is uh, necessary. I would suggest it's not a 10 minute job, it probably would take about 2 hours depending on how long you are, how you are at bike mechanics. 
but it is worth it and you do get a lot of feedback and a lot of data on your performance. If that's helpful, please check out our blog at insidetriathlon.org. Thanks, bye.